And the proms are back and set to play Rural Britannia once again following last year's backlash from critics who believed the lyrics evoked a British colonial imperialist past. The BBC are now welcoming back an audience with a programme celebrating British musicians. It's the 150th anniversary of the Royal Albert Hall and 80 years since the famous venue became home to the prom. So there's a lot of significant dates around this. Audiences will return to the Albert Hall in July for six weeks to see 52 concerts and 30 different orchestras. Not the same audience, one would imagine. Uh, let's speak to Norman Lebrecht, who's a music writer and commentator. Norman, good afternoon to you, sir. Hi. Uh, a, a very special year in many respects, not least, I mean, I mentioned the 150th anniversary of the Albert Hall, 80 since the, the proms, but the, the first in a couple of years that's going to have a proper audience there. I know. I mean, that's that's really, uh, it's it will be such a relief to see an audience back inside the Albert Hall. Last year, I'm afraid the BBC botched it. You know, this is the Albert Hall. There are 5,000 seats. Uh, the BBC and the Albert Hall together decided to go with an empty proms, which mm. felt like, it felt like a betrayal of the public. Within 5,000 seats, they could surely have managed something in the way of an audience. And a lot of musicians felt let down as well. So to see the audience back will be yeah. a great thing. They're going to, they're expecting up to 1,000. So that'll be 20% capacity. Um, and hopefully, if conditions continue to ease over the summer, it may be more. At any event, it will at least resemble something like the problems that we remember in the past and and hopefully we will be able to have a good time again just explain if, if you could in, in kind of layman's terms norman what, what is meant by the prom season what what is it what does it actually represent the proms are a series of concerts that have been running since 1895 so they're one of the probably the oldest series of concerts in this country they run over the summer which is a period when London is supposed to empty of its inhabitants as we all go out into the country and, and shoot animals. Um, but it's, um, it, it, it's, it's the sort of empty period and it's filled by nightly concerts at the Royal Albert Hall. And it has been, that's been going on for um, an awfully long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, so the, the continuity, the tradition are important. It's been run by the BBC since 1927. And it, um, it has a place in, in the national consciousness and in the national culture. And it is important. We, don't, we, can't, um, we can't ignore the fact that even people who never go to concerts or people who never listen to concerts on the radio or watch them on television are still aware that the proms are there. And what they may only be aware of is the last night of the proms, which turns into, in the second half, a bit of a uh, jingoistic jamboree. Yeah. But nevertheless, it's an occasion where people have fun and what on earth could be wrong with having fun in times like this. Well, I was going to say, if it is a jingo jamboree, so what? I mean, that's, a, that's OK, isn't it? That's where the problem arose last year. And, and this is one of the shabbiest episodes in, in the history of BBC Arts Broadcasting. Last year, somebody at the BBC, we don't know who, um, said we shouldn't really be doing Rural Britannia anymore. You know, we're pulling down statues in Bristol. Uh, people are objecting to the colonial past. Let's get rid of Rural Britannia. Britannia rules the waves. That sends all the wrong messages. Um, and then in typical BBC fashion, um, of which we've learned a good deal more during the Martin Bashir episode, hmm. everybody started shifting the blame upwards and sidewards. Wasn't yeah, he yeah. Wasn't yeah. he It was him. Let me move it along. So first they shifted it onto the conductor, who was a young Finnish woman called Dal Dalia Sosevska. I remember, yeah. Maybe, it may be that she made the first suggestion, who knows, but then she knows nothing of our national life, so it should probably have been ignored. Um, at any event, it became BBC policy. They weren't going to have Royal Britannia on the, on the last night. And there was a public outcry, not just a media outcry, not just the Daily Mail doing its chest banging, but genuinely, I mean, people yeah, stopped you in the street and said, why, why, why are they not doing Royal Britannia? So um, in, in a kind of, um, in one of those, those very awkward BBC climb downs, um, they said, all right, well, we'll do Rural Britannia. There's not going to be an audience there anyway. We'll have 16 singers spaced around the hall and they'll do it in a very, very decorous, non-jingoistic non fashion. Nobody <laughs> wave any flags. And, and, and then finally, finally, the final BBC concession was you can sing along if you like at home. 
Um, That's, no, yeah, really. that was allowed, of course. I, I would, <laughs> you know, I would give anything, Norman, to have been in one of those BBC meetings and knowing the BBC, they probably had about 500 of them to either have mm. arrived at the initial decision that it wasn't going to go ahead or perhaps more interestingly to be at the ones that were the, the subsequent meetings where they decided it will go ahead in a slightly different form. Uh, because this, you could ju almost see people falling over themselves initially to preen their virtuous whiskers at this outrage that we still have this song, and then kind of rowing back, wondering how they're going to address this um, absolute miscarriage of musical justice to appease the British people. <laughs> and it would have just been... I would pay good money to have been there, I'll tell you that much. It's an unending episode of the comedy series W1A. Isn't and it? I'm sure they're, they're still having meetings about it. And yeah. now the official line, official line from the director of the proms is uh Royal Britannia shall never 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 be banned from the last night of proms. <laughs> yeah i think that episode has gone down the history hole at the bbc and uh, never never to be seen or talked about again i love it and norman it's been great to have you on what is the you know i'm going to ask you for a standout moment really because you know for many people we, we won't necessarily recognize or understand what people go to see or who they go to see but, you know, if you were to kind of put it into more contemporary terms, who is the Lady Gaga of the piece in the proms? <laughs> this is a very scaled down proms uh, with very few with, with very few stars in it. Um, normally, the proms become a parade of the world's great orchestras. This year, they can't be doing that. Um, normally, the proms last for two to three hours. This year, they're down to 45 minutes. So it's a very, very, um, very... Um, miniature matchbox yeah. uh, set of proms, but within that, within that, there are some some rather fine acts. And in fact, we're going to see members of the Connie Mason family from from Nottingham. Uh, Sheku, who is the great rising cellist in this country, his sister Isato, who is was one of the rising pianists. Those are going to be worth watching. Um, there is a, a an extraordinary Romanian Swiss violinist called Patricia Kapuczynskaya. I'm not going to expect anybody to remember that, but she's going to be making her British debut at the proms. Um, and there's going to be some rather lovely and wonderful music. And if you can just hang on to the last night, you might get a chance to sing Royal Britannia. Love it. Norman, thank you. Great to have you on, sir. Uh, Norman Abrecht, who's a music writer and commentator. That was a, a fabulous chat with, with Norman. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that.